This video is brought to you by premiumbeat.com. In this fun in-depth After Effects video, we're going to create some nice clean logo reveals. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So we have a very fun tutorial today because we're gonna be creating clean intros which are great for corporate type content or if you're just wanting to show off a clean look, this tutorial is gonna be awesome. A lot of great techniques in this one video from creating a reflection to creating bright environments and working with lens flares. And before we jump into our tutorial today, I wanna to say thank you to premiumbeat.com for sponsoring this video. Premium Beat is a royalty-free music provider for your creative video and motion graphic projects. They have an extremely popular library with thousands of songs to choose from, and they have a very easy in-depth search and menu filter system that allows you to quickly find the best songs for your video. So for your next video project, be sure to check out premiumbeat.com for your royalty-free music. So let's go ahead and jump into our screen recording and let's get started. So here we are in our tutorial composition. All we have here is our logo along with some titles, but it doesn't matter if it's all in the same layer because we're gonna animate it all together. So when you have your logo in here, first thing I like to do is select everything, go to layer, pre-compose, and we can just call it logo placeholder and then click OK. So this way we can easily turn this into a template that we can update later if we wanna bring in a new logo or change you know, a subtitle or whatnot. So first thing we want to do is create the background. So let's go to layer, new, solid, and we'll just call it background, BG, and we'll click OK. Make sure we put this layer underneath our logo layer, and then let's go up to effect, generate, and let's add a gradient ramp. And from here, let's change the ramp shape from linear ramp to a radial ramp. And from here, we'll take our starter ramp, and you'll see that you have the X and Y values here. We'll take the Y value, and we'll move this to the middle of our composition. Then we can take the start of color and we can set this to white. Okay. Then we'll go to end of color and we can make this a little bit of a darker gray feel. So this way we'll have a little bit of like a vignette here. And then we can take the second Y value for end ramp and then we can kind of just bring this down. So this will kind of stretch out the white and all that. Then let's see the ramp scatter all the way up to like 100 or 200. This way we'll get rid of any banding. There might be some banding on YouTube, but there's no banding on my end. So just keep that in mind. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is animate our logo layer. So I'm gonna do something very simple, very clean, and I'm just gonna hit S on my keyboard for scale, and we'll add a keyframe for it. We'll move this, you know, we'll move forward in time, maybe let's say the end of our animation, six seconds, that's fine. And then we'll just scale this down to maybe 85%. So now we'll just have like this, you know, nice scaling animation here, just a little bit of subtlety on our logo, that's great. Then I wanna reveal this on, of course. So there's multiple ways that we're gonna do this. We're gonna use this by lens flares, and I'm gonna use a built-in lens flare effect inside of After Effects to reveal this on. So we'll go ahead and create a new solid, and we'll call this flare. Great. Then we'll go to effect, generate, and we're gonna grab the lens flare effect. Now I know it's very basic, and I'm not a fan of this effect, but it works for what we're doing. So we'll go to lens type, and let's set this to the 105 prime. Also 35 prime is not a bad idea, but the 105 is probably my favorite one. And let's put this right in the middle of our composition, like this, okay. Then let's toggle switch to the modes here at the bottom and let's set the blend mode to screen. Awesome. Then let's come here to the beginning of our timeline. Let's set the flare brightness all the way up to like cover up our logos. Like you get this bright flash of light here. So 170% is good for me. And I'm gonna add a keyframe for flare brightness and we're gonna move forward maybe to two seconds. Set the brightness down to 0%. So now we have just this nice flash of light that will reveal on our logo very nicely and it's really cool. And if we want, we can make the last keyframe an easy, easy keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard. I actually might increase the brightness by a little bit more. Awesome. So I want to add more lens flares in here, but when it comes to creating really good lens flares, you really can't do that inside of After Effects unless you have a third-party plugin. But in my case, I like to just use stock elements. Like, for example, I have this one lens flare asset that I'm going to drop right into here. And I will drop a link in the description to one of my favorite lens flare packs as well as a free one as well. So you can download that and follow along with this video. But I'm going to grab just say this lens flare. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, usually there's going to be a little bit of, you know, it's going to have a black background. All you got to do is change that blend mode to screen or add. And that will be in here. And I'll just offset some time. And now we have this extra sense of lens flare in here that just gives it a nice little punch to what we're doing. So it's really nice and it works out very well. So now that we have our animation in and a little bit of a lens flare, I wanna pull our logo out from the background and it's very easy to do this. So let's go to our logo layer and let's go up to effect perspective and let's grab a bevel alpha. 
and this will kind of just pop around the edges a little bit make it more you know three dimensional and let's come here to edge thickness and maybe increase this to like four and that's nice then let's go up to effect perspective again and let's add a drop shadow let's set the opacity to 100 percent but let's also increase the softness to maybe like 30 and this will add like a nice little pop to everything now let's say that your logo and text are combined together which i'm assuming it is and that's fine and we'll easily fix this I obviously don't want the bevel alpha and the drop shadow to be applied to some text. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool right here. And I'm just going to draw a mask around our, you know, our titles like this. Then set the mask to subtract. And then I'm going to open up our effects menu down here. Go to bevel alpha. Go to compositing options. Hit the plus symbol. And set the mask one. Do the same thing for drop shadow. Hit that plus symbol. And the effects are not applied to our titles right here so that is really awesome and now i want to be able to make this pop even further with a nice little uh light sweep animation so we'll go up to effect generate and we're going to grab cc light sweep and we have a little anchor point right here and you see we can move this around and that's nice and let's come here to the sweep intensity and we can just really increase this to maybe like 90 and it's going to give it a very nice harsh look and we come here to shape and we can set this to smooth as well and it's going to give it a very nice, hard, you know, light sweep like that. And I really like that. You can, of course, decrease it. Um, you can also decrease the width or increase it. It's up to you. Just adjust those settings. And let's come here to the beginning of our timeline. And let's grab this anchor point. And let's move this over here to the left. And let's add a keyframe for center. And let's move forward to maybe like three seconds or maybe a little past it. And we'll bring this anchor point going across. Now we would have animated this light sweep to move across our logo like so. And that's awesome. But I also want to take this light sweep and duplicate it. So we'll go to edit, duplicate. And we'll just hit U on keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And I'll take the second light sweep keyframes and I'll move these over in time. So we'll have a second one to come through. And I'll come here to the first keyframe. And I'll make sure that the center is off of all titles like that. And now everything that we have done up to this point, everything looks really clean and this logo animations really come together. I even animated the flare out just to end the scene. And you see just animating that flare makes it super easy to animate everything. But I have a few more tricks up my sleeve just to make this pop even more. And before we move on, I want to give a shout out to some of the best After Effects in Adobe Premiere Pro templates. So whether you use Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects for video editing, motion graphics, or if you're just a content creator, creating work can take a very long time and can be very repetitive. That's why I use templates for Adobe Premiere and After Effects. And these templates range from the very best video transitions for Premiere and After Effects. There's over 1,000 amazing video transitions just in this one pack. And it can help bring tremendous quality and value to your video, along with tons of other amazing templates for After Effects. So if you're not so handy in After Effects or if you're looking to save time, so if you want to check out some of the very best templates for Premiere Pro and After Effects, I will drop a link in the description to my favorite templates that I use constantly. And one thing I want to do is add a reflection like this and also just add a little bit more stylistic elements to this. So we'll come back in here and let's create that reflection and it's very easy to do it. The only thing you need to do a reflection is you need some sort of like textured background. You can just search up like a textured background, you know, something dark, something of a little bit of, you know, texture, just, you know, Google search that and bring that into your composition. So we'll bring this texture into our comp and we'll hit S-Ring keyboard to scale this down. And we'll need to make this layer a 3D layer. So toggle switch to the modes and then make that a 3D layer. And then we'll hit R on our keyboard for rotation. And we'll come here to the X rotation and set this to 90 degrees. Then let's hit P on keyboard for position and let's bring this layer down. All right, and we'll bring this to the bottom. We can also scale this up a little by a little bit. That's totally fine. And actually for this technique, I'm going to just angle this floor a little bit more crooked. So it'll go to like maybe 111 degrees or so. Then what we'll do here is we'll go to layer pre-compose and we'll call this floor and move all attributes into new composition. Click OK. And we'll put this layer underneath our logo placeholder. So it's right above our background and we'll turn it off. Then let's go up to layer new adjustment layer and we'll rename this to blur. And we'll put this layer underneath our logo as well. And let's go to effect blur and sharpen and let's add a compound blur and let's set the blur layer to our floor. Now nothing's going to happen yet. So what we need to do is take our logo placeholder and we need to duplicate this. And we'll put this underneath our blur layer. And I'm also going to hit M on our keyboard for the mask. And I'm just going to duplicate our mask one to get rid of the extra title. Then I'm going to take our you know, logo here and I'm just going to bring it down. You can see it's being reflected off the floor. Let's go to our blur layer and we can increase the maximum blur. And we can really blur this out. 
and I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and just create like a mask over where I want the blur to be and just hit FR keyboard for mask feather and just feather this out so we're not doing anything crazy and that looks really nice and if you want to invert your logo you just go to layer transform and you can click on flip vertical just keep in mind that the scale keyframes might be an issue so you might just need to uh, pre-compose this layer and then do that but this looks fine on my end and of course I'll grab the logo placeholder and hit T on my keyboard for opacity and I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer so it's not too intrusive and to help tie the scene together because everything's looking a little too sharp I'm going to go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to go to effect noise and grain and I'm going to add noise and I'm going to set the noise up to like 6% and uncheck use color noise and this will just add a little bit of grain into our image a little bit of noise just kind of help break all the solid pixels apart you know, I'd even go as far as 12%, but I'll leave that up to you. 6% is probably good for this. But when you're done, make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers. Make sure it's turned on here at the top. And now that everything is rendered out, here's what we have. And everything looks very clean and very simple. And it's up to you how many external lens flares you want to use. You can create a very unique look with more external lens flares. It's truly up to you what you want to do. But these are the principles for creating a very clean logo animation. So those are my techniques for creating clean corporate type logo reveals. I hope you found this tutorial insightful and if you're new here be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creative.